What up, K Rugs, the sober dog, coming at you. I'm out here at the park, a specific park near my hometown, because this was the first park I took mushrooms in. Magic mushroom, shroom, psilocybin, whatever you want to call it. That's what I'm going to talk about today, my experience with that. As always, Sober Dogs does not promote or condone any drug use. We are all about recovery, but honest, educational, and informative videos about addiction and recovery. All right, so let's get right into it. Hey, if you like Sober Dogs videos, hit that subscribe, hit that like, help me get more content out there, share it with friends and family, I'd really appreciate it, or share it with somebody you know could use it. Shrooms magic mushrooms, funky fungi, whatever you want to call it. I've taken these about 15 times with multiple different levels of experiences from good and bad. And I think it has to do with multiple different factors. One of them being, you know, the amount. Clearly the more, you know, the more you take, the more experiences you're going to have. Another one being the who grew it, you know, a lot of times it's grown by drug dealers or by people who don't really know what they're doing. Different humidity, different temperatures, different everything can adjust the amount of psilocybin, which is the actual part of the mushroom getting people high. Also, when you buy, let's say, if people were to buy an eighth of mushrooms, that's an eighth of an ounce, there's going to come in, you know, caps and stems. Now, one person might take a gram of stems and another one takes a gram of caps. Now, weight-wise, they both took the same thing, but effects-wise, the one who took the caps might have twice the effects because, at least in my experience, the caps were always stronger than the stems. So, this might be an altering thing. What happens a lot of times is people will take shrooms and weight you know 45 minutes an hour they won't have much effects or very little so they take more you know one thing I could compare this to a lot was like edible weed edible pot brownies things like that multiple times I took edible brownies in an hour hour and 15 minutes went by and the effects were minimal so I ate more thinking that I didn't do it right or that it was a dud or it wasn't as strong then all of a sudden an hour and 40 minutes into it all the effects hit me and i'm way higher than i ever imagined i've gotten that with with shrooms too because you take them and you know pretty much the only way to take them is ingesting them so they got to go through your whole system and digest and all that till you get the effects of them and then the last one is environment and kind of state of mind ahead of time if you go into a trip in a bad environment with bad people or a bad state of mind, it's going to definitely affect it. If you go in in a positive state of mind, you know, in a positive environment with positive people, it's going to be that type of, you know, effect, that type of trip. Same type of thing if, like, if somebody's an angry person already, they're usually an angry drunk after they get drunk and vice versa. If somebody's very happy, a lot of times they might be a happy drunk. Same thing with shrooms, except it's magnified to me. So I'm at this park, Webster Park, and the reason I said this was significant the first time I took mushrooms was here. Now, one thing I always notice when I take them is about 25 to 30 minutes into it, the giggles start to happen, really jittery and giggly, you know, everything's funny, and even Gemma's laughing, and also, the dim effect I call it wherever I am if it's indoors outdoors wherever the light starts to dim a little bit like imagine you have a light with one of those knobs that you could dim it you know low and high it feels like somebody is dimming the lights on you but nobody actually is that's when I know it's starting to kick in about 40 minutes to an hour into it the effects start to really you know pick up and hit Depending again, depending on how much you took and how strong they are, this is when you're gonna get, you know, a lot of the giggles. You're gonna start to see. This is when the hallucinations can start. A lot of things with light, um, different lights. Some are very bright, some are dim, very focused. Um, like imagine if you focus real hard on, you know, like a pattern or, or a bunch of bricks. The the patterns and the focus start to come out. You feel like 
Right now I'm looking at the grass over there, which is like eight or nine feet away. It will look like you are inches away. You could see every little, little cut on the grass and every little, you know, it's like it is in your face in a microscope. All these things start to, to come at you. Also, this is when the, the psychological effects, I mean, those are all psychological effects, but an hour, an hour and a half into it when you're hitting your peak, this is when a lot of the thought comes of questioning things, questioning reality. It has a great way of deflating ego. Uh, shrooms have a great way of making people question their actions, their behaviors, what they're doing. You know, I remember questioning like the rat race of going to school and work and just doing that all day and going home and, uh, you know, questioning how I behaved, how I treated this person. Why don't I go see my grandparents more often? Why don't I call them more often? And that can all be good and positive. And that's where a lot of the medical benefits and people testing mushrooms, you know, universities are going for. There's a lot of places that do like um, mushrooms where people are on their deathbed. I don't think it's legal in the U.S. I'm almost positive it's not, but in other places with great results because it gives you an introspection into like the greater scheme of life. Um, it has a way of the little stupid kind of, I owe this person $20, I was 20 minutes late to work, um, my girlfriend's mad at me. Those things that are, you know, pretty small problems Mushrooms make you realize that and you're like, yeah, those really are. There's so much more important stuff in life like treating, you know, sitting down and, 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 and being having a good relationship with family and being happy and having a job I love and how grand the universe is. All those effects, you know, are coming at this time. Now, like I said before, this is where environment can affect it too. The first time I did them, I was here. So the water, the sounds, the creek sounds are magnified. I could hear the water like I'm an inch away. The birds and any, it was nighttime, any of the little, the uh, buzzing of mosquitoes and any of the night sounds. This is like a pretty big forest around here. So you're hearing, hearing, some, so night hearing some night sounds, owls, sounds, deer, owls, things, like owls deer, things, like deer things, like things, things like that. You could hear it. And that, you're, Part of it is the psilocybin and the effects. Your mind's playing tricks, but you might see something, and whether it's actually there or not, you can't really tell because it's you know maybe 200 feet away and it's a shadow. It could actually be a deer, but it might not, and that impacts the effects too because now you don't know if it's really there or not. You can't really see it. You, you look up at the stars and realize really kind of how small everything is, how small we are how the world is just a real deep introspective thought it's really crazy that something that just grows on you know cow poop and on the ground can give us these type of effects but they really do now like i spoke about earlier with the environment the same way this environment made it kind of amplified it because of the outside the nature the stars the creek the sounds all that the people I was with were into it and enjoying it and that added a, a benefit of the effects because somebody else might say like hey listen to that I could hear the deer talking something that my brain never went to but as soon as he said it now it clicks into my brain and I feel like I can connect and jump in and, fee and listen too. the same situation can happen in reverse a couple times later when I did it, I was in a friend I was at a friend's house in a friend's basement. There was maybe 10, 12 of us, um, about five people actually taking shrooms, and there's a couple of uh, you know, a couple of our girlfriends there, a couple of people just hanging out. A buddy of mine got a phone call that his grandfather passed away. That was the worst thing that could have happened at that time. We're in this deep trip, introspective, questioning everything, sight, sounds, and he gets this awful news. So now he goes into a panic, he's crying, he's questioning everything he's done the last year. Why didn't he call his grandpa more? Why didn't he go see him more? Everything like that. Now we're all starting to think that way about our own families and our own grandparents, and it hits you hard. I mean, to the point where a couple of us went outside and called some of our family members and just were like, you know, I love you and I, you know, miss you and should come see you more and things like that. That 
can actually be beneficial and positive, but at the time made for it to be completely different, you know, and just not the best environment. But that's how all those can affect you. So I really believe, again, I don't promote or condone any drug use, but I know people are gonna do it anyway. Please, you know, don't. Sobriety is possible recovery if I could talk you out of it, but if not, have a safe place have a good environment with good people, um, you know, getting in a good state of mind ahead of time. All those things are important. Now, as far as like you see sometimes on TV with like, you know, a, a leprechaun jumping out at you, um, I've taken a massive amount and gotten different hallucinations that aren't necessarily, you know, Mario and Luigi in front of me, but to the point where everything was just like space. I was just gone out there. Um, but those type of things I think are more for large amounts when people take a lot or with other stuff mixed in. Um, and I guess it also depends on what's going through your brain. If, you know, if you play Mario and Luigi video games all the time, there's a better chance you're gonna, you know, have a type of Mario hallucination versus somebody if I don't play. So things like that, I'm a huge animal lover, so I hallucinated dogs more. My dogs were near me a couple times when I took shrooms and I would pet them and their fur felt so smooth and soft and I would question, you know, I should take them out more. I should be more like the dog and just love and be like this. Um, so it depends on what state of mind you're into and different things like that. The overall effect mushrooms have are a deep, mental intro introspection of, of kind of everything, your personal behavior, uh, outward behavior, who you're with, how your life is. And then yes, there is the fractal hallucinations. Um, there's the overall like space hallucinations and how grand and big everything is. There's the little focused ones like you could see deep into the wood, you could see the, you know, each little twig and the grass. All those things are real, will, you know, typically happen depending on the amount. Now, if you, people who take like two grams or less, they're probably not going to get those severe hallucinations. It'll probably be more of a like intense weed high, a lot of giggles and things like that. Maybe a couple of the lights dimming effect, but um, the more severe and serious hallucinations come from more amount. But that also creates more danger because as you're questioning all these things and everything like that, it's also where you could lose reality. Time slows a lot. You can start questioning things to the negative too, of, you know, like thinking about negative thoughts, you're a bad person, who you're with, family, friends, where you are, all these things, and all that can kind of hit you like, like 500 therapy sessions combined into you know a five minute hit of questions and it can be overwhelming and too much also motor functions can get affected at the larger doses harder to walk that kind of heavy feeling of cement cement feet now not that you can't move but that it's just harder to move and everything slowed down time slow and you, you may be talking different all those things can have effects at that point definitely not safe to you know do anything important did never drive operate machinery have anything important planned have kids around um, even with pets I would say you know, it's fun sometimes to pet them and have them around and they're so comfortable and loving, but, you know, make sure that they're fed and they get outside and everything because if you go into a, you know, three, four hour deep trip, you know, where you're off in another dimension, then, you know, they, they got to make sure they're taken care of. Now, that was what my experience with mushrooms was like. I'm going to put up I'm going to put up other videos about the actual physical and psychological effects, short term, long term, um, a lot of scientific, you know, scientific stuff and research. Um, let me know if you have experience with it in the comments, what it felt like, if it, if it affected you. One thing I also noticed was it affected my thought process for about two to three months afterwards um, in a positive way most of the time, a couple of the times negatively. But 
I that when when I talked about like questioning why don't I call the grandparents more why aren't I more loving to these people that stuff stayed with me for months after the actual trip that was all kind of a benefit because it made me a better person um, not worried about some small tedious things so much and, be, and I was more concerned with like being a good person and being there for the family uh, but also if it's a bad one that can those bad effects can be there for a couple months after too so let me know if you had experience like that where it affected you afterwards after thought process things like that I know that's big with why people take it on the deathbed is it helps them get comfortable with death and even if they don't pass away the next couple days they that comfortableness stays with them for you know months and, and you know until that actual time comes all right again sober dogs does not promote or condone drug use but let me know if you have experience with it how it went all right k rugs the sober dog and gemma and we're out see ya